Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for spending your rainy day with us today to talk about some important matters that impact not only Clayton County Public Schools, but Clayton County residents. And as you know, this information that's shared today will consist of the Federal Aviation Administration tax issue. Key information will be shared today by our Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Morsi J. Beasley, and other elected officials. We'd like to welcome you and thank you for being here today. For the order of the program today, we'll have remarks from our superintendent, we'll have various elected officials to speak, and then we'll open the floor for Q&A. Without further ado, I'd like to call to the podium our superintendent of schools, Dr. Morsi's J. Beasley. Thank you, Jada. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you all for being here on this rainy uh, but a beautiful afternoon. I tell you, it, it's always a, a pleasure to come and, and see you all's faces, but I, I had to leave today. I was watching four children fly across the stage at the Performing Arts Center. Did y'all know we were putting on the production of Peter Pan? Let's give our children a hand, even though they can't see it. So I did get the first half of the show, so I guess I'll have to go back tonight to get the other half of the show. But today, we, we, we've called this meeting, we're working in collaboration with the entities, Clayton County entities and our elected officials to basically share information about the FAA and to uh, make sure that we're moving in the right direction. I'd like to recognize our board members that are here. I see Ms. Goree, Ms. Burroughs, uh, if you all would just stand and be recognized. And thank you, let's give them a hand. Mr. Straker's over there, good to see you, Mr. Straker. We appreciate you all for being here on today. I think it's important, it's important and, and very important that we're all here on today. And clearly, all of you have influence with other individuals, with those who may be elected and those who may not be, or the or voters. And so I'm asking all of us to use our influence uh, to some degree to make a difference. So in a nutshell, I'll just share with you what is going on. Um, but before I do that, I want to, we've got our delegation, they're going to come shortly. Uh, we've got our delegation chair, let's give Ms. Bernard a round of applause. She's now the chair of the delegation. Congratulations on that. And we've got Representative Snowball, Representative Scott here. Let's give them a round of applause as well. And they're going to come momentarily. I want to recognize our other elected officials that I see here. I see Commissioner uh, Gregory here. Good to have you here. I want to come over here to my left. And this is important that everybody's here. I see Mayor Dave Jones, Borough City right there. Great. Good. Mayor Tadar, I see him. Morrow, it's good to have you here, sir. Morrow's here. I see uh, Commissioner Sebo here. Jonesboro, it's important. It's important. Important. I see Ricky Clark, City Manager. Um, anybody else? Any other cities here that I'm overlooking? Forest Park over there. Good, good, good. Good to see you. Mel, uh, Gail Hambrick is here. Excellent. All, listen, who else is that? Y'all got to help me out. I'm still learning all your names. Lovejoy. I just saw you the other day. You introduced yourself to me. Good to have Lovejoy here. Lovejoy here. Jonesboro. Very good. Very good. Which city is not here? That's the question. Because this is important, you need to be represented because this impacts every entity, doesn't it? Every entity, all of our children across the county. So we're glad to have all of you here. And so very quickly, uh, I'll say this. You all know we've been dealing with the uh, 2014 interpretation of the code, federal code by the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, basically interpreting a, a, a standing code on its books to say that if a a locality, a sponsoring locality of the airport collects aviation fuel taxes, that those taxes should be used for one thing only, and that would be aviation purposes. Notice what I said, a sponsoring entity of the airport. That means an owner of the airport. Clayton does not own, county does not own the airport. Therefore, 
Somebody needs to clap for that. I don't know who ever clapped for that one. <laughs> but because we don't own the airport, you should know that the county collects its aviation fuel taxes, which infuses and goes into our SPLOS funds. Those funds go into our building of, building of schools, capital improvement projects. The aviation rule, as it's being interpreted by the FAA, basically says we're breaking the law as a county. We should not be collecting the funds, and if we are collecting the funds, they should be used for what? Aviation, aviation purposes. We challenge that in that we have the right to collect the funds because we are an entity. However, since we don't own the airport, we use those funds for what our voters say those funds should be used for. Our voters share that those funds should be used for SPLOCs, capital improvement projects. We, our entities, all the cities and the county government and the school district um, got together some time ago and they filed the lawsuit. That lawsuit uh, is, has been filed in the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. On March 9th, we were scheduled, Marshall, am I correct? March 9th, we're scheduled to uh, make our case. In 15 minutes, I'm told. I don't know how you do it in 15 minutes, but they're our lawyers. They'll have to do it. Well, you should know that we were preparing and are preparing to make the case on March 9th that we believe hopefully will allow us to continue to uh, use the taxes as they are collected for the intended purposes or our voters' intended purposes of collecting those taxes. Now, all of a sudden, House Bill 821 shows up. Everybody say suddenly. suddenly. Now you all know nothing happens by, by uh, accident. Everything is, is driven by intention, isn't it? Yes, it is. But House Bill 821 basically will put us in a position, and you'll get a, you have a handout here, they'll pass out some of these once uh, the, uh, we had to print these up today. Basically, 821 puts us in a position that uh, aviation fuel taxes are eliminated from being used. Basically, the state is saying we want to comply with the federal rule. Now, when does a state like Georgia comply with the federal law? Now, y'all don't want me to go there. I hadn't heard since I've been in Georgia anybody want to comply with the federal law. But all of a sudden, we want to comply with the what? Federal law. And so now we're working with House Bill 821 to comply with federal law so we don't put the, the state or threaten funds that may come from the federal government to the state of Georgia. In House Bill 821, basically, it will eliminate federal aviation uh, fuel taxes, which basically would be a way of letting us know that we cannot tax nor will we be able to count on these taxes for the remainder of this SPLOS and future what? SPLOS. Not only will it eliminate our ability to tax and use the taxes as we, our voters, prefer them to be used, it will also annul the lawsuit. Y'all, y'all, everyone understands what annul means. I don't mean to be insulted, but that means all the money we've spent, every effort that we put forth, our day in court will be basically what? Snatched away from us. So we find ourselves in a situation where we've got, potentially through House Bill 821, potentially we won't have the ability to fight on March 9th, have our day in court, and potentially, basically, going forward, eliminate the option of collecting aviation fuel taxes that our voters here in Clayton have determined should be infused into our SPLOS projects. Bottom line is, this county, our school system, is carrying disproportionately the weight of the so-called state tax relief because Clayton County is the county in which a lot of that fuel is purchased. Does that make sense, everybody? And so we find ourselves where we are today. I want to recognize Dr. Anderson, board member, for being here as well. Let's give her a hand.
And so we're here today. We're here today because we, we've spent, was that Thursday, us, uh, Rhonda? Yeah. Thursday, all day on the, uh, at the Capitol. And then we, uh, we were there to meet with the Democratic Caucus. Wish I could have met with the GOP Caucus. Got a few words for that caucus, too. But we were able to hang around for, change my schedule on Thursday, and we were able to hang around for the Ways and Means Committee. Did y'all listen to the video, the audio that I sent? Now, if that didn't get you fired up, I don't know what will. So I sat there and listened to basically individuals, elected officials, basically say, Clay, screw you all. You should have appreciated the money while you had it, but we're going to take away the money from you going forward. But not only did I hear that, I also heard individuals basically share some untruths about property taxes. Now, and we'll find this out, and, and, and we'll, we'll get some, Marshall, we may need to get some clarification, because I was told that Delta pays property taxes, uh, but that needs to be clarified because we've got $110, $11 million in property taxes for acreage at the airport that we don't collect property taxes on. Say, so see, see, you got, that's why you have to ask questions and know something. So they're paying taxes on property in Fulton County. But I want everybody to understand, and you all, we need to know this. Imagine if we collected an additional $111 billion a year on property taxes for our children. Now, I can't go back in history and tell you why we're not collecting those taxes. I just know by state law, we can't do it. They won't allow us. Don't know why they decided to take that right away from us. But I would, want, I would submit to you today, if we collected that money in property taxes, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Now, would we? No, we wouldn't. As a matter of fact, I think we'd be one of the high performing school systems in the state of Georgia. So we find ourselves where we are here today, wherein we've got a situation, don't we love situations, where the governor is pushing House Bill 821, Delta is behind that, and I've spoken with Delta since then, as early as this morning, and I sent them my video, so they'll be clear on my position. I'm very clear. I support Delta, and I know some of y'all probably work for Delta. And that's a good thing. Keep working for them. Pay your taxes. But the bottom line is this. We've got to have a mutual beneficial solution. So whether it be at the legislative uh, session or in the session, through the state budget, or through Delta setting up a foundation where they give us this money, we need the money. Because if we don't get the money, somebody's projects are going to be delayed, canceled, or significantly reduced. Does that make sense? Because it takes money to do what we need to do for our children, okay? So I just want everybody to understand, it's not about being adversarial with Delta. All I want is a solution. I want a solution, whether it happens with the governor, through the budget process, through the legislative process, or through Delta. We want a solution. I do not want any, any corporations' profits to be increased on the back of our children. <laughs> Period. Period. I shared that today with a representative from Delta, and I'm expected to get a call from their CEO. And I expect that, I'm going to say that publicly, from one CEO to another. I expect that. That's just protocol. Would y'all agree with that? Yeah. Protocol. And not only that, as I shared, if you're in this community, you ought to be a part of what? This community. And so I was very clear. If I've got to stand here and explain this situation, then I need my colleagues my fellow CEOs here with me. So we're here today with our delegation, all of you, because first of all, we need to make sure that we have a presence, have a presence. 
at the state capitol. And they'll come, Rhonda Bruneau is gonna come with the others and discuss what could be happening in the upcoming week. Secondly, I want everyone to know our consistent message is a solution. Everybody say a solution. Legislatively, budget-wise, or otherwise, all we want is a what? A solution. We're not adversaries with anyone at the Capitol. We're not adversaries with Delta. All we want is a solution. We want our children to get what they want. Deserve. Period. Period. And if that can occur with legislation, budget, or otherwise, then that's what we would expect. I did tell Delta this this morning, that I felt blindsided by the House bill, 821. They said they were disappointed that I, you know, mobilized. <laughs> I was disappointed that if you were talking to me for this bill to come forward and no one had the respect to let me know that it was coming. And so, we all have our opinions, and so I made it very clear. You're giving the, the governor something very concrete to work with, when he's giving you something very concrete to work with. It's called House Bill 821. I said, so they wanted me to, to know that they want a solution before I had this meeting today. So, you know, I'm gonna get up on Saturday morning and eat breakfast at seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but if I do, I wanna hear something. But I made it clear, and so they're, they're, they want a solution, but this is what I told them. I said, just like you have something concrete at the Capitol called a piece of paper in House Bill 821, I need something concrete. I appreciate words, good intentions, whole lot of folk that lost of plenty of land in, in the world. <laughs> Through folk words and good intentions. And so my position is this, until I see something concrete, then as far as I'm concerned, I don't have a solution. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah. I want to see it in writing, even if the board has to vote for it, and Delta's board has to vote for it, that's fine. But I need to see it where? in writing, because if it ain't worth writing, it probably doesn't exist. Does that make sense? And I made that very clear. And so what I would like, our Rhonda's gonna come, and uh, Representative, Representative Murno and, and the delegation, I see Mr. Douglas here and Ms. Schofield, I want you to know, we need a presence. And so we want to work with our delegation to make sure we have a presence. We need to continue to write, email, call, and we need our a presence on social media. Our message is we want a solution. And let's work toward a solution. And so at this time, Representative Berno, who's our chair of the delegation, is going to come and share with us information. Good afternoon, everybody. And thank you all for uh, coming out this um, afternoon. Also, I want to let you know that this is streaming live. And um, for those who don't get to see it, they can uh, view it on uh, Monday on the Clayton County Public Schools website. Um, at this time, I would like to uh, let you know that your delegation has to work very hard for you. Um, some of our members are not here because they have the flu, and so we, instead of them um, giving you the flu or you, get, or you getting the flu from them, we suggested that they stay in their houses. But I just want you to know that we are working 100% uh, for Clayton County. We believe in Clayton County, and we are fighting for Clayton County. So at this time, I'm going to introduce our members of our delegation. But before I do, Representative Sheila Jones is sitting in the back. She's from uh, Cobb and Fulton County, and she came to support us. So we want to thank her for coming. <laughs> Our uh, newest member of our delegation is Representative Kim Schofield. She, re Schofield, she represents uh, Forest Park, and uh, she took Representative Keisha Waite's place. So she's our new representative. Um, next to me is Representative Sandra Scott, um, Representative Stovall, and Representative Demetrius Douglas. 
At this time, Representative Stovall is going to start off, and she's going to give you the history of how we got um, to this place. Thank you, Madam Chair. And Clayton County residents and businesses. Um, definitely didn't want to have to be here during our legislative um, um, session time to have to talk about this issue, but it's very, very important. And I'm gonna do the best I can, and, I, and we tag teaming up here, so if I get stuck on something, I have um, the rest of the delegation to kind of let me know what I might miss. Um, this is not a new issue with Clayton County, and many of our residents that are here already know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, that this, uh, in 2011, the legislative body um, imposed, enacted a bill uh, to take the tax exemption away, to allow the tax exemption um, to hurt Clayton County then. And then in 2015, um, the tax, then we did another legislation to allow Clayton County to continue to start back collecting the fuel, um, fuel tax. And so to me, it's just been where we've been almost like a ping pong table. We've been bounced back and forth. And um, we look at it as that we are one, we're all a part of Georgia. And when one of our counties, like Clayton County, is hurting out of the 159 counties, then all of us throughout the state should be hurting. And I do not know a time in history um, in this state, most currently, where there's been any tax exemption that has directly affected one particular county like it's doing in Clayton County. And um, I agree with um, the superintendent and appreciate him and the leadership of the um, school board with calling this particular meeting because it's important for you all to know. There's a lot of work that's been going on in the past um, years uh, trying to fight the FAA ruling. Um, and, and the superintendent definitely broke it down to why we cannot collect the um, tax according to the FAA ruling. And so where we are uh, now is that House Bill 821 is an annual bill that we normally do is a cleanup bill. And the cleanup bill means that there are a lot of issues in the tax code that needs to be revised. A lot of things get outdated just like some of uh, which is without cities and counties. You have to update things on a regular basis. And so it wasn't an alarm to us. That's one of the reasons someone asked, well, why you all didn't know? We sent you down to the Capitol to look out to make sure that this bill didn't get as far as it did. But I want to make sure I broke it down to you to help you to understand how the process works at the Capitol. And it's very, very important that you understand that. When bills are introduced, there's usually what we call, what's called a caption. And on the caption, there's maybe about four or five lines that says, Re reenacting or um, uh, dealing with something with the tax code. So you're not thinking that it has to do with a tax exemption for fuel tax. And only until, I think it was um, Wednesday, uh, Tuesday, uh, when um, Clayton County, the entities and those uh, individuals that they've hired to come down alerted, well, I don't even think all of us knew about it because none of us sit on the ways and means. So at the Capitol, we have different committees and all of us sit on different committees, but we do not, none of the Clayton County uh, delegation sits on the Ways and Means Committee, so there's no way we would have known. And on other times, we usually know about situations coming up is when we have members that might sit on the committee, but a lot of times they don't know until they actually get that bill and start reading when we're in committee. And so that's why we weren't able to be there to be able to do the testimony time. And so it went to subcommittee, and then after it passed out, that's when the testimony was made by Clayton County, um, um, the entities that came down. Then it moved the very next day to full committee. And that's the recording that um, Superintendent Beasley referred everybody to is what, exactly what happened. So even though we're legislators, we are not allowed to have any testimony when it's do, usually doing full committee, because they were already, that's why you have subcommittee. You discuss everything, then it goes to the full committee. And so we're, where we are now, if you look, if you, any of you all look up the bill, I don't know how many of you had a chance to look at it. If you read the first couple of pages, you will not see anything in there that says anything about tax exemption fuel tax. If you go to page nine, you'll see on page eight where it gives you the definition, but it does not say anything about fuel tax exemption. So once you get to page nine and start reading, that's when you're gonna see tax exemption um, for, and then it says airline and airport. Then up under that, you see a lot of lines marked through. 
those are the changes in the bill. If you see a line underlined, that, that means those are the new things, and the other ones that are crossed out means we have deleted those out the bill. So there's no way that we would have known. There are about 1,700 bills that come across our desk during the 40 days that we're in session. And I have not met anyone down there, even those who've been down at the Capitol for at least 20, 30 years, they have been able to keep up with every bill that comes through that Capitol. So when uh, Representative Bergno stated to you all that we've been doing our job, we have been doing our job. And that's why you see us here today, so that we can make sure that you all understand that there's a process. So with that information being hidden inside of that bill, there's no way we would have known. And so once it was brought to our attention, then we said, okay, this is what we need to do. And that's when we got with, um, continue to talk with the um, with Clay County entities to figure out what we need to do. And that's where you all are gonna come into place, uh, into play with this. We can all, we don't have enough votes to stop the bill, and that's a reality. Uh, no matter, uh, if we get, was able to get all of our, um, some more people plus the Democratic Caucus, the Democrats and everybody else, we still would not have enough votes. And this is a powerful bill. I want y'all to understand this is a very powerful bill. And, uh, and it's a governor's bill. And, um, and so because it's a powerful bill, and what will happen is if you vote no on the bill, what you're voting for is the other tax issues that are in there that the regular citizens need. So that's the dilemma that I want y'all to understand. So if you vote no, you can't just vote no on for page eight. The whole entire bill, when you vote, you'll vote it no. So say for instance, you're supposed to get an additional tax break this upcoming, everybody get ready to file their taxes. And say in that bill, which is in there, there's additional tax break. Well, if you voted no, guess what? You're not getting that tax break uh, for this uh, for the upcoming year. So all of those things are what we call the cleanup bill, but it's really clean, kind of clean up on Clayton County. That's kind of what I, the way I look at it. And so, and one other thing I did want to make sure I mentioned, I'm going to pass it on and let um, other colleagues jump in, is that there was a statement made during the committee meeting. If you all have not heard the tape, I definitely recommend that you listen to that tape. It is very egregious and some of the things that our colleagues that we sit among have said about Clayton County, like we're deliberately breaking the law. Superintendent kind of made a, uh, a, alluded to the federal law. Well, just like we had the medical marijuana bill that was passed a couple of years ago, it's against the law to have any kind of uh, container as well when it comes to marijuana. So how is it that we can pick and choose on when we're going to follow the federal law and then when we're not going to follow the federal law? And in this case, it was said that Clayton County was not following the federal law. And there was another statement made about with, that we should not be using the courts to be able to uh, make sure that we have our fair, fair trial. That's what the th that third branch is set up for. They interpret the law. And that's our right as citizens to be able to do that. And so all these things that you hear, if you didn't know any better, you would think that, oh, Clayton County is just terrible. They just keep doing this over and over again. That's not the case. We are a county, and nowhere, like I said, in history has it ever been where a tax exemption has totally affected, almost devastated a county. We've given tax exemptions in our, uh, at the state that I voted for when it comes to the film, new, the film industry. I mean, y'all like the film. We give a huge tax break for that. I'm in favor of that. When it comes down to the music industry, we've given tax breaks for that. And we even gave tax breaks for the boats, the repairing of the parts of the boat. Right, thank you. But it does not affect directly a county like this FAA ruling and this tax exemption part does. That's the difference when it comes to tax exemption. So our stance is that we understand about the tax exemption, but what we don't understand and we don't agree with is how it's gonna affect Clayton, Clayton County. We want a solution and we don't want any more talk. Delta has been saying for over a year that they're gonna work something out with Clayton, Clayton County. Every time we ask them about it, or we're working something out, we have not seen anything in concrete in writing. So we don't, do not believe what they're saying until we see it in writing. What we're saying is that we don't want you devastating our county. This money is gonna hurt not only our children, it's gonna hurt our families here, it's gonna hurt our business. It's gonna almost make us that we cannot operate with public safety like it needs to be, our library. There are a lot of things tied into this money that we need our money. And don't do us and treat us like we're stepchildren, a part of the 159 counties. We are just as good and solid as all of the other 159, 58 counties. 
And so I'm going to stop there and let um, the other colleagues and um, say something, and then we'll kind of go back and forth. But I just wanted to make sure that you all understand the process that happens down at the Capitol. And I did want to say that one other thing was a statement made that Clayton County continued to collect the taxes after we received notices. The state continued to collect, we, because we represent the state, so we have fun there too, continued to collect those same, those taxes as well in the tune of $34 million. It was from June, July 2016 to June 2017, the state continued to collect, that means the Department of Revenue kept collecting that money. They just stopped collecting the money. What happened, there was a change in the line item on our budget on last year. Yeah, and so um, last year they moved that money around so that the state itself was not going to be hurt, but there was no solution given to us as Clayton County. Uh, good afternoon, State Representative Sandra G. Scott. I will call to action. What we're asking for everyone to do is to continue to email the governor. We know that the bill will be going to the Rules Committee on Monday morning. Rules Committee start at 9 o'clock. 9 a.m. they are in the Rules Committee. What I'm going to ask the superintendent to do, I'm going to ask that school be held at the Capitol. Half can come Monday and half can come Tuesday. We need to flood the capital and let them know that we are not going to stand for this. We need teachers, we need all the mayors, we need all the city council members. We need as many people as possible to flood this capital and let them know that Clay County will not stand for this. This We're talking about $18 million. $18 million will devastate this county. That's a lot of money when you're talking about $18 million. Where are we going to get it from to make up this difference annually? And that started this year going on forward. So that's a lot of money. I, we all know that school is important, but you may can't send all the kids, but we need to flood the capital. We need to do when you see it on TV and you see the state's capital so full people can't walk around them where well, they need to be full with Clay County people on Monday and Tuesday. Like I said, the bill will go to the Rules Committee on Monday, and we sure it will be on our desk on Tuesday morning if they don't put a slick one. See, we never know, because they can have it in Rules Committee on uh, Monday morning, then they could come out and they would have to sit on our desk for about an hour, and then we would get the vote on it on Monday also. So we never know whether we're going to vote on, on Monday or we're going to vote on Tuesday. Because again, this is the governor's bill. It is the governor's bill, so they're going to move it quickly through the House. And then it will go to the Senate. And in the Senate, we have Senator Davenport and Senator, C and Senator C. And I can tell you that they are both are already in gear. They are already fighting in the Senate, trying to get support to stop this bill. But we all know that we do not have the vote. We do not have the vote, so we must be real. So we're going to have to come up with other means. And that's flood the capital. Flood the capital. Continue to email, continue to call all the representatives, all the senators, the governor, all the leadership, and let them know that Clayton County cannot take this beating. Now, if they come up with a solution to give us a how we are going to make up for this $18 million, then we can take that, but we cannot stand to lose $18 million annually for this fuel tax. And people, if no other time than now, we need everyone to get on board and move into action. Thank you, Sandra. Uh, good afternoon. I am State Representative Demetrius Douglas, and I, don't, I won't go back over what my colleagues said, but whenever there is a time and a need for all of us to come together on one accord, this is it, okay? We all have to put our differences aside, and we all have to work together in one common goal. That we should be doing already. But God, <laughs> God has a way of bringing all of us back together, besides our differences. And is, is it going to take this? This is the time. Because guess what? It doesn't affect me individually and personally. 
It affects everybody in this room. And guess what? We're up here working for our kids and our grandkids, right? And our city. And it's very imperative that we all come together and stick together. Not saying that we have to live and work and play with each other, but guess what? Respect each other. During this time, and we should have been doing this a long time ago, but guess what? I'm a firm believer everything works out for the glory and the good of him or she or they who work together and serve and trust in and believe in you. That's what it's about. And like my colleague said, we can't stop this. It's only 64 of us Democrats, okay? It's 120, 23, 24 of them. So whatever they want to get passed, they can pretty much pass it. But if, if, if we make noise, what I understand by being at the Capitol is when every community, every city that doesn't want something in their community, we see them every day in droves every day. We see them at the Capitol in front of the governor's office. They, sometimes they have to put them out. They'll usher them out. But guess what? They got it done. Whatever they were coming down there for, they got it done. They were an agitator. So guys, I'm just here to reiterate, time out for foolishness. Let's get together on one accord one time, all right? So we all can feel good and all can stand up and say, hey, we came together and they can never say again that Clayton County is not together. This time, we make a difference. We will not be silent during this occasion. So please, I beg of you to tell your colleagues, tell your neighbors, uh, tell your friends, an uh, email or a call. If you can't be there personally, an uh, email and a call to the governor's office will make a difference. They will be so tired of them answering that phone. They'll say, please take care of Clayton County because they keep calling. And they keep showing up. We have to be an agitator today. And from what we know of this bill, it's very imperative that, <laughs> I don't know what we did in the past when I wasn't down there, but guess what? We might have did something very egregious to other, other places for them to, to keep picking on us every other year. To keep picking on us every other year. What is it? What have we done so bad that we have to accept? this outcome, but if we come together today, during this time, during this season, we can make a difference. We can all toe the line together, all right? We don't have to go home with each other. We don't have to sing Kumbaya with each other, but guess what? We can all stand together for this issue to protect our grandkids and our kids. Thank you for coming out. May God bless you good, good, good. So I'm the freshman. It's been a long time since someone asked you to call me freshman. But I want to say this to you. When is enough enough? We have been fighting the battle, accepting crumbs for too long. I don't know what makes you get up out of your house to go downtown and to use your voice, but I stepped into this seat because I knew there were gaps, there were problems, and I had to take my voice to let people know enough is enough. If we don't stand up right now at this moment for this issue, what else are they coming for next? Okay, this time we'll have questions of Dr. Beasley. Well, I'd like to see if I can them I want them to come and give them a chance to come, board members, come on up. Because they have been, um, they know a lot more about what's going on, and I think you need to hear from your elected board members. So you'll know exactly what this board has been doing since, I want to say, about two years now, a little over two years. Okay. Vice Chair first, I guess I should go to Vice Chair. Yeah, I know she wants to talk long, so she wants to go quick. Okay. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> anyway, good afternoon. I am so proud to see all of you come out and support us, support your county. I'm going to go back to 2008 when an egregious occurrence happened to Clayton County when we lost our accreditation. And back 
in those days, I begged everybody to come together and support the board, but we listened to what the outsiders said about our board. So as Representative Douglas just said, it's time for us to come together and work for the citizens and the children of Clay County. Now, we keep talking about, I, I just showed Dr. Beasley something that I got off the internet that said $89.3 million is how much, I'm not gonna say the name of the movie because I'm gonna support it, just made here in the state of Georgia. But they wanna take away 18 to $20 million. The governor who claims that at, he wants all children reading by the third grade, tell me how everybody's going to be reading at the, at, when you're in the third grade, but you want to take $18 million from us annually. Tell me how that's going to happen. Are you doing this to any of the other school districts or the counties in Georgia? No, you're not. Delta, you say that you pay taxes, you say that you support us, but last year we had a student by the name of Antonia Harden that had the opportunity to go to Australia to sing with the opera. And I reached out to you, Delta Airlines, to ask you to give her a ticket to fly to Australia, and you turned me down. You said you couldn't give me one ticket for this child to go to Australia. And I had to get on Facebook, and the person that helped me the most was Sheriff Victor Hill, because he got on Facebook and all his friends came together, and we got enough money for that child to go to Australia. Delta Airlines, you are the same person that you fly your planes over our schools every day. Uh, children that go to Unidos can't even come outside because it's so loud because of your planes flying over our airport. You have given $1 million to Atlanta Public Schools. You have given us nothing. When you were going back from Delta Airlines, Clayton County gave you money to help you stay afloat. Now it is your time to give us a solution. And I'm gonna tell you right now what that solution is for me. I want the $18 million annually. I want you to put it on paper that you will give me that. I also want you to say that you will give me that money and you know, inflation, so every year when, you know, next year it's gonna be a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. If you really care about your children, Governor Deal, you are going to take that bill back to committee and you're going to add something to it that says that you will not make Clayton County the scapegoat and you will not put this on the back of our children because we deserve better. And I am tired of people trying to come down here and stomp on my county and take things away from me. And I'm not going to stand for it. And if you can't do it that way, yeah, we sure did go to court because we have been paying the Board of Education, along with all the cities and the commissioners, we have been in court, and the board, we've been paying the largest amount of money for these lawsuits, lobbyists, and all of this, and you're trying to step in the way and stop us from getting what is rightfully ours. We're gonna continue, and I don't know if I have to call up one of them ponytail lawyers, but if you pass the bill, you might see me in the courtroom, because I sure will go to court. I believe in all branches of government. Thank you very much. I just want to let everybody know that um, Ben and I have been to the Capitol this week, well, last week, and we went up to talk to our congressman, and we did talk about the fuel tax. I just want to say, Demetrius, where, where are you? He said something that was very key. He said, we need to put our differences aside and we need to fight for the children of Clayton County. Do you all understand what I'm saying to you here today? It's time for us to fight for our children. $18 million, $18 million, can you, can you, can you just fathom how that's gonna affect our children, affect our books, affect things that you want for our classrooms? It is time for us to stand up and it is time for us to put our differences aside and fight together. I don't care if you don't like the person next to you, but guess what, at the end of the day, that person is from Clayton County. And that person is one of us, and we need to start working together. Black, white, green, and purple. It's time, y'all, it's time. 
And yes, it's sad that it took something like this, Demetrius, for us to finally see that we've got to do what we have to do. But Governor D, I'm going to say this to you. You know, you want us to help you with certain things. We need you to help us with Clayton County, and we need you to help us with our schools. Our children mean a lot to us, and our children mean a lot to me, and our children mean a lot to everybody in this building. And we're not going to stand here. I'll be there. I'm going to take off. Y'all know, I, I'm going to take off. I'll be there. Whatever I need to do, I'm going to be there for these kids. I'm going to be there for you, Dr. Beasley. And I want to thank you, Dr. Beasley, for everything that you've done for our county. Because you know what, Dr. Beasley? You came in, you came in strong. And you come in like a lion. You come in like a lion. And you know what? We're going to leave out. And we, please stand here and give him a round He has done extraordinary for this county, y'all. So I will be down there tomorrow. I'll be calling, hello, can I do what I need to do? I'll be calling my boss, but I'm just going to let y'all know. I'll let the TV cameras know, too. I'll be there. And I'm going to be there fighting. And my, I might be the loudest voice out there, but you're going to hear what Dr. Lincoln Anderson has to say for Clayton County Public Schools. Because I was there when we lost the presentation. I was there when we got it back. And we're going to get $18 million back today. Thank you. something so profound that um, uh, Representative Snowball and I have spent hours on the telephone talking about. This is that opportunity for each and every one of us to get off the soapbox for just a minute and say that this issue is what's the most important thing to do. I, I, I collaborate with so many of you. you. Many of you have gotten phone calls. I know that um, Commissioner Gregory is sitting here and she's looking at me and she's smiling because she's saying, Ben, there's one objective that we're trying to reach right here, and that's to make sure that not me and you are okay, but our children walk away with the win. And that's what we have to keep focused with. And that collaboration that, that Representative Douglas talked about is not us getting up here and saying, this is what we're going to do, but it's all of us sitting in that room and saying, what is the strategy? What is the goal? What is the objective that, de that determines the win? So I want, uh, um, um, uh, uh, Ms. Merrill said it best. Everybody in here, for one minute, I want you to say, you don't count. You know why? Because we don't count until we go get a neighbor 
an aunt or uncle that wasn't here to then begin to get on this mission. When that happens, then we could raha, we did it. Because the faces that I see in here are the faces that we always see. And that's not gonna move the capital. The capital's not moving with this. But when we go next door and say, here's what's happening, here's what the issue is, here is where it's not political, but we gotta get this done, that's when we get this win. So you stand behind our superintendent and listen to his words, because he's posturing right now. He's telling you, yeah, you know, he won't say this. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to lose the, 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 that, that, that vote. But I guarantee you, he's saying, we're going to come out with something. Yep. Dr. Smith will tell you, called him up early this morning, early. I said, Dr. Smith, what, what, if we lose this, what does that win look like? He said, Ben, as long as we can replace that $22 million in some way or some fashion, we win. Delta makes $36.6 billion each and every year. $22 million, you do the fraction on that, it's nothing. So all we have to do is strategize, position, and we win. Before we uh, talk about anything else about this, I did want to mention one thing. Uh, we did lose a great leader today. Uh, our mayor of Lake City, uh, Mayor Oswald, passed. So I did want to uh, put that out there and let you know, uh, the family, please let them know that uh, they're in our prayers. We lost a good person. And so, and, I, and also, so please, uh, you know, any regards that you can send to the family. I also just wanted to put out two names to, because I had that, I listened to the uh, live thing that uh, Ms. Stovall did, and the, uh, you all, please go back and listen to the Ways and Means Committee. And David Knight, I'm, I, if somebody is get, taping this, please know that I heard what you said. And Trey Kelly, you were so insulting to the children, the citizens of this county. You try to act like we are trying to steal something, and we are not. We are just asking people to care about all the children and all the citizens of the state of Georgia. You know, all of us that stand here, the representatives, they represent, they, they are elected officials for Clayton County and uh, Fed and whatever, but they represent the whole state. And when you do a bill, you need to be worried about all of your citizens. You can't hurt just one child mm -hmm. just because you want to make people that are already rich, richer. You want to, it's, it's, you know, it, it's ridiculous. So please remember these two names, David Knight, Trey Kelly, and as uh, I believe uh, Demetrius Douglas also said, even if you can't make it downtown tomorrow, it would be nice if everybody can come, but we realistically we know that won't happen. Use that, your social media. You need to contact every single person that is a member of the General Assembly and ask for help, because that's what we need. Dr. Beasley. Thank you all. What I'd like to do, we've got uh, Mayor Tadar and Mayor uh, Day here. Mayor, would you all like to have words? Because this, please, come say something. Yes, sir. But I think it's important. My kids went to school here. All of my kids went to school here. They graduated here. They benefited from what we are trying to work to make better now. This, I'm, I'm hearing this, the teamwork necessary to make this happen, it's crucial. This is one of those defining moments that comes along once in your lifetime where you actually can make a difference. Monday and Tuesday, downtown under the gold dome you need to be there the school system is vital to clayton county but remember this is half of the situation the county and the municipalities are also getting the same amount of revenue that you hear that is going to impact the school system and we're going to have those same kind of impacts the number of police officers you see on the street 
may have to go down. The number of fire department personnel that are responding to an accident, the next time you see it, they may be missing one individual because we can't pay them. The effect is going to ripple through your entire support system in Clayton County. The school system is taking the biggest hit. They are half of this. 50% of this problem sits right on their lap. But we also have a share of this same problem. And you are in a position to make a difference. This is the time to stand up and make a difference. As a 35 year veteran of Clayton County Public Schools, I can tell you that I am extremely disturbed about the effect on our children and our school system. I feel like we are on such an upswing and we are in such a good place that this is possibly the worst thing that could happen to us. Uh, you know, the school system is a business. Our cities are businesses and we have to have that bottom line. Um, I could go on and repeat everything that's been said. Thank you so much to our legislators for being here and being so informed and being in our corner. It means so much to us that you are doing that and all the other people that have spoken. I do want to say that I agree totally with Dr. Beasley's approach. I think it is a moral issue, absolutely. The impact of the Atlanta airport on our on our community cannot be negated. It's not going to go away. We are going to be forever affected by having so much of the airport in Clayton County. And we should be remunerated for that. I believe that. That's just what's right to do. Um, if you haven't listened to the recording of the committee, I urge you to do so. And if you would like to email me and you don't have a way to listen to that or email Dr. Beasley, I'm sure that he'd be glad to send it to you. You really do need to listen to that. It's very telling. Um, I've been given Mr. Knight's phone number by my city manager, and I would be glad to give that to you. <laughs> because I think, I think we have to, you know, when you have a cause at the Capitol, our legislators will tell you, that I email them if I find out about a bill that's going to affect our cities. You know, I know they can't always vote the way I ask them to vote, but at least everybody helping each other makes a difference. So if I know something that GMA has told me about a bill, there's no way, as, as Representative Stovall said, that they can know everything that's going on down there. And Representative Stowell, I want to thank you for that very important speech because, because your remarks were right on point about everything that you said. And thank you so much for being so good to explain all that to us. David Knight's number is 678-416-0150. So, and you can reach me through our website if you need uh, anything. Just let us know because we we all are together and we're going to stay together. Okay? Thank you. That number is 678-416-0150. Burn it up. I, got, I have one more thing to say. Uh, I'm glad she gave out that number because uh, we have a house rule down at the Capitol is that we don't live in other people's district, we don't live in other people's county, and we don't mess with other people's county. We don't carry legislation against other people's county. And that number that this joy, uh, Mayor Joy they gave out is the young man who carried the bill 399 yep. that started this whole thing. Yep. And I asked him about this. I said, why would you do something to affect a county that you don't live in, okay? He don't live in Clay County, he lives in Griffin. And I said, why would you carry a bill to affect a county that you don't live in? So you guys get on the phone and call, I mean blow it up. Make him turn his phone off. Because I am still hot about the situation that he's put us in to this day. But we're gonna, we're gonna overcome this time with your help and God in control. Thank you. Yes, it was for uh, the businesses at the airport, the concessionaires, that, that has been normally paying us a tax because they have a business on the Clayton County side of the airport. 
Now, we collect this tax annually, and we've been doing it for years with no effect. But somebody got mad because they didn't want to pay a tax anymore, and they called the FAA on us, okay? And basically, the FAA said, basically, we can't tax them, or we can't tax them, but we can't use the money for nothing but aviation. We didn't have an aviation school in Clayton County. So we were taking some of the money, put it in our, for our schools. That's what we're using it for. But this bill started the whole shenanigans, all right? And, and I'm here today to tell you I'm still hot at him, but, but God said I'm gonna have to pray for him even, even though I did, he despitefully used my account, all right? We still gonna have to forgive him. All right, but not restore him back to where he was. But we we gonna have to forgive him. But right now we are gonna call him and irritate him. All right, God bless you. As we get ready to close, I want to recognize Commissioner Warner Franklin there. Um, Ambrick. Oh, you have okay. And I, we got a commissioner here. Is that what county is that? Russo and Fayette. Thank you for being here on today. We did here today. So let's do some. We have some questions. So let's let's. Yes. Uh huh. Come on, sir. Um. Come on, Marshall. And then we'll entertain the questions real quickly, and then we'll bring it to a close. But I wanted to be very clear as to what we're going to do over the next few days. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Marshall Mitchell. I work with Venture Denmark. We're one of the firms that's been engaged to assist with this issue on the state and federal level. A couple of things I wanted to say and leave you with. Uh, it's important to note that even though the state has proposed to eliminate the local sales tax on aviation fuel, that they are retaining the state sales tax on aviation fuel, which is 4%. Delta, then, would be excused from one penny of that four pennies uh, for themselves. So the state uh, sales tax would be 3%, would remain at 3% on aviation fuel. Uh, secondly, what's important is Senate Resolution 227 last year uh, was sent to the U.S. Congress from the General Assembly decrying the fact that this federal mandate had this kind of impact on Clayton County. In 2015, the Georgia Department of Law sent a letter to the FAA explaining that this impact was disproportionate to Clayton County and in addition violated state statute as it relates to the use of local option sales tax and the Georgia Constitution as it relates to the use of East Block's funds. So, this whole thing has just been incredibly contradictory. But I don't want to spend time on that. We're talking about solutions. Here's what we need. We need to amend 821 so that even if we lose 821 or 821, that the collection of the taxes will go till the, the referendum authorization period, which is 2019. And it will go to the referendum authorization for the cities 2021. Now what does that do? That would allow us to continue to collect those monies, which is about a million and a half dollars a month until the expiration is up. But it also would keep our lawsuit alive in federal court. The federal court hears that this Georgia law says that aviation fuel is exempt. Secondly, another solution. We just need an appropriation from the state. The state is getting 3% on aviation fuel. Give us some of that back. Give us some of that back. Third thing is the aviation fuel tax is about 16% of our collection. Increase the possible levy from one penny to a fractional penny, let's say one point two five or whatever the case might be. You guys have to approve it by referendum anyway. So on the remaining commodities, I don't care if it's horseshoes, whatever it is, 
take education fuel out as a taxable commodity, but increase the levy. And amend Title 48 in these sections, and you guys know what I'm talking about, so that that fractional penny can be collected on the remaining commodity. Fourth thing, amend Title 6, 6325, so that Clayton County could assess the leasehold interest at the airport. Delta had a 20-year lease at the airport, 20 years. If you, if you tell me that they don't have some property rights and some property interest in that lease, I'll, I'll tell you I'm a millionaire. Some people say I am, but I'm not. But I will say, I will tell you that we need to, to amend 6325 so that the population goes from 550,000 to 250,000 and catches Clayton County. The last thing, Delta, take some of that money out of your pocket and give back to this community. Thank you, Marshall, for sharing the options and, and the solutions that we have identified and that we will be uh, pro-offering pro as we move in this situation. What we'd like to do be before we bring it to a close, our commissioners, I thank Commissioner uh, Franklin Warner, um, would like to share, come on, I know you know, this is a passionate issue, and, and then we'll bring it to a close with some closing comments and some action steps. Yes, sir. I almost feel like I need to sing a hymn. I'm um, serious because it is a travesty. Because I'm a mother of four, I'm not just a, a representative and a, a uh, commissioner, but I'm a mother of four and a previous educator. Everybody come on down. And I'm sorry, we were supposed to do this. Come on down, Commissioner Russo. And the only reason I was coming up is because I wanted us to make sure we took note that it's not just Clayton County that's taking note of what's being done to us, but it's fellow commissioners that are members with us with ACCG. And uh, Commissioner Russo, told me in the back, he said, Felicia, you gotta get this message out. Don't drive your cars. He said, get with your superintendent and fill the buses. All right. Let's roll down there full in those yellow buses. So when they see Clayton County rolling up, they know we're about business. So just as you heard the representative say and the school board say, it's not enough for us to sit in this building. We've got to make sure that we get our neighbors and our neighbors' neighbors and our friends. And I'm gonna tell you something, reach to those that are even in Griffin because it's affecting not only us in Clayton County, it's us today, but it might be somebody else tomorrow because it is a moral issue. So I'm here, I will be there, and we're gonna all come together. And I heard everybody talk about putting differences aside. At the end of the day, we are together on this issue. When you start talking about our babies, we don't play about our babies. And they're gonna know it. When we roll up in the buses and we file off those buses, they'll know Clayton County is here, not only present and to be counted, but we're here to get the job done. And no offense, Mr. Straker, but I don't know if you know something about me. Anything I get in, I'm gonna win. We gonna win. We're gonna win. Get it in your mind. Y'all ain't ready. We're gonna win. You've got to go in not defeated. We know that we're going to win because it is the right thing to do. And we're going to get out of politics and call right, right, and wrong, wrong at the end of the day. Good afternoon. I'm not going to be repetitive, but just to re reiterate my support, I would like to ask our chief operating officer to come up and he can elaborate more about the county's collaborative efforts with the city and the Board of Education. Before he speaks, let me just say this. Uh, on the uh, information that uh, Representative Douglas was giving, the sales tax that was coming from the concessionaires out of the airport, all of the businesses agreed to pay the tax. All of those businesses agreed that they would pay the tax to Clayton County. But it was this person out of Spalding County that disrupted the whole process. And also, and I, nobody has touched on this, but if this goes through property tax, 
for all of you out in own property, know that it will have to go up. And that could be devastating for all of us, including myself. So please remember that. So let's get on board. Tell your neighbors and all, especially property owners, that that's a possibility. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dietrich Stanford. I'm the Chief Operating Officer. I won't, I won't be repetitive as to the points that everyone has made. I think there's one key point that the Commissioner wanted me to hit. With the loss, the local option sales tax, when we talk about the build out of our libraries, our recreation centers, all these capital projects that we have in the county, it will impact that. So when we talk about quality of life, not just for our kids during school hours, but kids after school hours, when we talk about our infrastructure, that has a direct impact on our ability to be able to take care of that large infrastructure, so keep that in mind. And so the last thing I will say back to what the representative said, as well as all our delegation, one of the main things that we're doing differently under the leadership of Dr. Beasley, we've been very tactical as a county. We need to be more strategic. And so the reality of it is, is that when we go out and we react to a lot of the things that's happening in the legislature, then it's because we're being tactical. But if we can be more strategic about our action, we can get a lot of things done as a county. So please, make sure that you take that at the forefront in all that we do. And if we do that, as the commissioner said, we all can win. So thank you. Well, thank you. I, I am a guest in your house. But it's Clayton today, it's Faith tomorrow. The other part of the equation for us is we don't have the luxury as representatives on the legislative policy making side to create commodities or revenue streams. When you talk about making two billion dollars on luggage, two billion dollars annually on luggage, they've created a revenue stream where we can't. My colleague just said it's going to be property tax because we can't create revenue streams. This is critically important. I join my colleagues. I appreciate them letting me cross this artificial boundary of 159 counties that doesn't make sense at all. Uh, we have got to come together, and I join with you all, and I thank you for allowing me to uh, speak. Thank you, Dr. Thank you for being here today. Yeah, so Dr. Beasley, if you all can arrive down to the Capitol, about 8.30, between 8.30 and 8.45, they go into rules. Rules start at 9 o'clock. It is in room, rules be in room 341 of the Capitol. 341 of the Capitol. So if you could get there by 8.30, yeah, that's why I'm saying 8.30, because you have to go through security. The room is room 341 in the Capitol. Rules start at 9 o'clock. 9 a.m. That's what time Rules Committee will meet at 9 a.m. So we could be there and have the impact and they see the impact of Clayton County uh, coming in the building, coming up to the third floor. Monday, Monday the bill will, 99% it will be in Rules on Monday morning. So, uh, thank you. So I just want everyone to know, yes, question? Yes, ma'am. We sent all of that information out, so let's make sure we have your email so you're getting all of our emails. That's okay. It's not an email address. You have to send it to that link that's on it. H-T-T-T-S. Oh, it's going. Sorry, here it is. Oh, the, this is the website, Georgia, no, gov, G -O -V, dot Georgia, dot gov, slash, web form, I think if you just go to gov, dot Georgia, dot gov, you'll get there. If you go right there, you'll get there. All the rest of that stuff is where you land it, once you get to the page, okay? 
Man, we'll, we'll send out, because I'm going to share what we're going to send out, email. I'll get, i got to get with my team about an idea so we can have some kids there, but i got to get permission slips. But y'all got a pretty smart administration. we got it covered. <laughs> Speaker of the House and Lieutenant Governor as well needs to be contacted. So all of that information is on Jaden's communication. And Kelly. And may, oh, you make sure you contact him. If you go to our website, all the information is right on the district's website. It's right there. So if you don't have any of the contact information, you go to Clayton's website. It's right there on the website. Or see us after the meeting, and we'll get it to you immediately, OK? We will, as a matter of fact, what I'm going to do, thank you for sharing that, what we're going to do is we'll, we'll send out some bulleted talking points, but I'm going to also send out permission slips to everyone in case parents want their children to participate, and we'll work with our team to see how we can mobilize students and buses on Monday and Tuesday. Does that make sense? So that's the only way I can get permission slips right now, and i got to send them to you and tell the parents they want their child to go, fill out the permission slip, send it back to the school, print it out, send it back. They don't want their child to go, tell them to send the permission slip anyway. No, just kidding. <laughs> okay, you all, you heard a lot today, but action. You gotta be heard, right? Email, telephone calls, you gotta be heard, and you gotta be seen. It made a difference. Let me tell you why uh, Delta called me on Friday because we were at the Ways and Means Committee, and y'all know I had my cell phone taping it. And by Friday noon, the word was already out. So I had already scheduled a meeting with Delta, so they wanted to meet this morning. Let me tell you this, I don't believe that we're gonna lose. I know we're not going to lose. <laughs> See, I like many of y'all believe that if one door may shut, that's okay. But there are many more doors, many more doors. And so we're going to have a solution, whether it be H, H, uh, House Bill 821 or the courts or, or AT&T or Delta, Delta, we will have a solution. But this is, where our, this is what I'm going to say to us. I've been you all superintendent, feel like about three years. Less than a year. So let me say this to you all, if I can, and I share this, we have nothing to lose. Y'all hear me? When you listen to that audio of the Ways and Means, and I sent that out for a reason. If anybody who knows me, you know I sent it out for a reason. Because I want you to see what people think about our children. And if that doesn't get you mobilizing on the same page, I don't know what will. I don't care what has happened in the past. Listen, don't let, don't believe that hype. Our school district, 70% of our schools beat the odds only behind Cobb, which only had 81%. Whether you know it or not, you say, what does that mean? Our schools were predicted to score at a certain place. We scored higher. Don't make it, I'm telling you. Accreditation, stop talking about that, we're accredited. Don't let people take you there. Listen, you don't even have energy for that. We're accredited, next conversation please. Our children, most of our schools improved in their CCRPI scores, period. We went up four points in one year, the most jumped from one year to the next since they started with CCRPI eight years, six years ago. And I, I can assure you that you're gonna see an improvement this year. Grad rate is at 70%, almost at 70%, and about to go over 80%. I can assure you the work is already go, uh, occurring. So what I'm saying is this. Clayton County, the position, the location, the property of this county, folk would love to have it. I'm gonna just leave it right there. And what you don't appreciate, somebody else what? We would be less than intelligent. And I'm 
I'm gonna use the word intelligent because you got to know me. To let somebody come and take your stuff in 2018. Delta not going anywhere. I told the rep today, he said, oh Delta, we got a great relationship. Y'all not going anywhere. You got too many benefits of being right here in Clayton County. Y'all, access to the world, right here. Not going anywhere. I said, well, let me tell you what we wanted. And I told him this. I said, I don't want to hear no more about money going to APS. And I said, I'm not taking anything away from APS. I love the children in APS. They deserve to learn how to read like everybody else. But let me make something I was very clear. I expect, going forward, that if there's an announcement of 500,000 being infused somewhere, if there's an announcement that a million dollars has been given somewhere, I expect it to be coming to the children of Clayton County. And I don't say that disrespectfully, I say it because it's the right thing. Listen, you all, I don't have anything to lose because if y'all get rid of me, I'll just go work for somebody else. I ain't going nowhere, Miss Gorito. But the point is this, we got to stop being fearful and timid. Oh, yo, everywhere, every time I go somewhere, people tell me y'all people are fake. I just learned years ago, if Martin Luther King didn't teach me nothing else, that's why I listen to his speeches every time I get a chance. If you're going to stand, stand for something. You got to know. You got to know what you got, who you are. Don't let people diminish who we are. You can't diminish me. I wasn't raised in such a way that you can diminish me. You can't diminish my children because they know who they are. You can't do that. I won't allow you to do that. You can't take my resources. We, we got to know who we are. Clayton has to know who we are. Listen, I want you to listen to the stories coming out about our school system. They've been positive. I didn't bring nothing with me. All of that was already here. I didn't bring anything with me. That was already here. All we did was organize the folk, organize the team, bring people together, and say we're going to fight, and we're going to fight together for our children, because if you're not going to fight together, you don't need to fight at all. And so I want to make it clear. I don't have any issues. I work with chairmen. I work with every commissioner. I work with every delegate member. I work with them all. And I want all y'all to know I love and respect all of you. Because I think you've been put there for a reason, for such a time as this, to help our children. And my word to the governor, I was clear. I'm sure he saw the video. It was clear. They got to do what's right. To the elected officials, you do what's right. Because if you can't do what's right for all people, then you are wrong. And this universe is a moral universe. It has a way of shutting you down. I may not can, but I know somebody who can. It will shut you down. And that's why you got to, all of us, you got to do what's right. Y'all hear me? If I don't. If this position does anything for this community as superintendent, I hope it does this one thing. Position it in such a way that it will never be the same again. Never. That we will always fight for our children, that we'll always stick together and ensure that our children have the very best. I wonder, have y'all been to your schools lately? I had had a person to come in this district from other places and visit our schools not tell me how beautiful our facilities are. You have some of the best facilities in the nation right here in Clayton County. But we're going to continue to get what's due us. All we ask is for you all support. Y'all hear that? Work together. Come together. We're going to send out the permission slip. So parents, get, we'll get the word out. Then we'll go straight to their inboxes. We'll work with our principals for kids who have permission slips and transportation to see if we can get some buses mobilized. 
We're going to be there. We're going to have a presence. You get in your cars. It's about fighting for our children. Let it not be said that this issue came up and we didn't have a felt presence, a visible presence at the Capitol. They can ride Marta to, to Georgia State. We'll walk right over. Let's make sure we're there. Call those people. Call all of them you heard on that audio. Especially Kelly. Make sure. Call them. Email. Send contact. Let them know. But most importantly, most importantly, once we win this battle, and we'll win it. Oh, you know what? Y'all call Delta, too. Y'all call Delta, too. Get out there on Facebook and say, we want a solution. That's all you got to say. We want a solution. A tweet, tweet, Facebook, wherever. We demand a solution. Bottom line is, we want a solution, right? Demand a solution. Get out there. Want a solution. But let's remember this, and we'll win this one. I'm confident we'll get a solution. We'll get a solution. It's going to be more than what we lost. Oh, yeah, I said it. Y'all hear me? It's going to be more than what we would have gotten otherwise. But remember this. After this, don't go back to our same old ways. That's the tendency. Go back to your same old habits. But remember, we're a great community. People respect us to the degree that we do what? Say it again. They respect us to the degree we do what? When they see that you respect who you are and you know who you are, they'll do the same, won't they? Yes, ma'am. I see you with the baby. There you go. Well, they started calling her saying, hey, my nephew's daughter is losing money, and you voted in favor of it. So now she thinks her seat is uh, Come on, man. That's what I'm talking about. We all have friends and family in Henry County. How many of you do business in Henry County? I went down. I, just, I have a relationship with the Piccadilly. In South Carolina, I told them you would not get my contract. If I find out that you have not written a letter to this representative saying that you have poor his behavior and what he has spoken to right. our people. So we have more power. There you go. There you go. Excellent.
Yeah. 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 We will. We're going to strategize. So pay attention to your emails, okay? We're going to make a, we're going to have a presence this week, okay? I'm working. Just so everybody know, I'm working with Delta behind the scenes. And so I need y'all to do what I just asked you to do, right? A solution. A solution. And I will keep the community posted on our progress. So we'll see what happens at the Capitol. And we'll be working. And remember what I said. I done heard folk talk enough. You gave the governor a bill. I need some paper. I need something. And we're going to get just that. I hear their legal team is working on it right now. OK? Let's let. Hashtag Clayton Strong on your, on your Twitter. Hashtag Clayton. I think you can do that on Facebook, too. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And I'm coming on that way. You said you're sending out emails. If you don't have children and you just care about Clayton County, how do you get on this email? Just, you see Jada right here? Just come on and we'll add you. Okay? Yes, sir. I'm a scientist. Scientist. I'll tell you now. Some of the worst qualities in DNA, especially in Clayton is in North Clayton County, Southern County. I know this is true. But the second thing is, have you contacted anybody in the caucuses downtown? They can work for us. The caucuses? Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we spoke with the caucus yeah, on, on the other day. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're attacking from every angle. They're working on you. Rep Stovall. So um, kind of going back to the process and the structure, and I'm glad you brought that up because um, we did, we didn't mention that part. So uh, because we're in the minority, anytime a bill uh, goes through a committee, if there's at least two uh, other minority that uh, sit on the committee that vote no, we can automatically ask for a minority report. And with a minority report, it gives us additional time on the floor when the bill um, gets to the floor, additional 20 minutes. So we've already been working with our um, leader, leader um, Trammell, to strategize on how we're going to utilize best those minutes. So you have what's called debate time, and then you have the uh, minority report time. And so we'll be able to maximize all that time and some other things that we'll be able to do as well uh, to make sure that our voice is heard among our colleagues uh, when we're on the floor. So thank you. And in the morning order. And uh, in the morning order as well. Very good. Write this down tomorrow, Sunday, at 4 p.m. at Divine Faith, there will be another event about this issue. So if you can't make it, make sure you represent it. You're represented, okay? Sunday at 4 p.m. at Divine Faith. It's Bishop Battle. Everybody knows where Divine Faith is located. Okay? We'll be sending out some permission slips as we strategize how we're going to ensure that we have students and others there. But those grown folk, that being you all that don't need my permission, we need you there, don't we? We need you there. That's it, and let your churches know what's going on. Ask your pastor if you can have a minute or two to share. We need everybody there. What we're going to do right now, if everybody is staying, Pastor Dr. Jeff Lowe is here, president of the Association of Christian Ministers of Clayton County, pastor of First Baptist Church in Riverdale, and president of Riverdale Elementary School Council. I see Bishop Dukes over here. We're going to ask our, our pastors to come and, and, and just lead us out in prayer. And if you don't believe in prayer, that's fine. You don't have to pray. But for those of us who do, we're going to be praying with you. So come on, Bishop Dukes. Uh, any other pastors that are here? But I just want to say this. For every giant, there's always a David. And all it takes, all it takes is one stone. Everybody say one. one. And the stone may look like it's less adequate than what the giant had on, but it did the job, didn't it? And you got to believe, we've got to believe that we're going to win. We're going to win. As
Matter of fact, we ought to say we already won this. We already won it. So let's give it over to our pastors. We enter into win everything. That's it. That's it. Say that. Well, listen, look at somebody say everything we enter in. Now, you know, I'm a pastor, so we want to hear you say everything I enter in. Everything I enter in. I enter in to win. I enter in to win. 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 Give me a now. Win. 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 Now, say the whole thing. Everything I enter in. Everything I enter in. I enter in to win. I enter in to win. You know, I'll never stop with, I'll say this. Clayton County. Two compound words. Compound words. Clay and ton. Clay means that we can mold it into something. It's mild with the tongue talking me. And ton is how much of it we got. So let's go ahead and do this thing. Amen. Amen. Friends, uh, before I pray, I want to tell you, I've been in this county a little while. Uh, went to Lake City Elementary School, GP Bab Middle School. It was in the second graduating class, 1973, of Morrow High School. 73, yes, sir. 73. <laughs> Most of y'all weren't born. Now look on the back page of the, of the information sheet you've been given, and you will see that this tax on the aviation fuel began in 1994 and 1997 through the work of State Senator, uh, come on now, Rep. Carol Scar, and Bill Lee from the House of Representatives, who was the budget chief, the master of money. Those two men are rolling over in their graves today. They would never have let this happen to Clayton County. All right. And we can't either. Last thing, I'm not going to preach, but Jesus said something about Anybody who harms my little ones, it will be better that they have an anchor around them and thrown into a lake. Now, I'm not recommending that. But I am recommending that. I am recommending that we have that same energy that we put our little ones first. Let's pray. Almighty God, we know that you have a hand on the children and the young people of this county. Lord, we could not have regained our accreditation if that had not been the case. We know that in Romans it says, that all things will work together for good for those who love the Lord, those who are called according to his purpose, and that you, almighty God, will bring about good out of this situation. Father, we don't care. We don't care if the money comes from Delta. We don't care if the money comes from the aviation. We don't care where the source is. But, Lord, we're proud of these beautiful schools, and we are proud of our children. And we do not, oh Father, want to see the burden placed on the backs of these children for the loss of this revenue. Almighty God, we just ask, we just ask that you would do exactly what you've always done. Lead us through the Red Sea, help us cross the Jordan, Lord, you've never forgotten your little ones, and you never will. And for that, we give you thanks, we give you praise, and we ask your blessings upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thanks, everybody.